Hey, Tolerators, happy holidays. I'm just here real quick to remind you that we are on our holiday break until January 2024. That means that all new content will be on our Patreon. There will be both free content and content that is behind our patron paywall. Our main focus on the Patreon this year will be our Misogynist of the Year Award. We are going to look at some of the misdeeds of misogynist in 2023 and crown who was the biggest misogynist of the year. If you would like to vote for the misogynist of the year award, please make sure that you are following us on Patreon, whether it is for our free content or our paywall content and sign up for our newsletter. Today on the feed, we have one of our still comfy episodes where we look at our favorite comfort movies with Julia Washington from Pop Culture Makes Me Jealous. Each still comfy episode has a video component of our live stream on our YouTube channel. There is a link in the show notes that will take you right to the still comfy playlist. Make sure that when we're back in January 2024, you are joining us live on YouTube every Tuesday where we can review some of our favorite movies. Happy holidays once again, and I'll see you soon. Hey, Jules, we watched a movie it was about nights and it had Heath Ledger and we're sad he's dead. <laughs> You're moving your camera. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm like, I don't even know if this is picking up. This is, this is insane and live on the internet. I was like, yes. also, not the cadence. <laughs> not the cadence at all. It's, okay. it's like you, you meant to pre-write this and instead you're just going to improv a song. Yeah. <laughs> Life's hard, okay? Hello, life's um, hard. Hey, friends, it's still comfy Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> no? No, I love it. I love that I was like, what if we did Queen? And then yeah. you're like, you're fucking all of your shit up. <laughs> and then you're like, hey, everyone, it's us. <laughs> God, people are gonna be like, when did Daphne and Julia start doing hard drugs before they went live on camera? Well, it's not hard drugs, it's late stage capitalism. Oh my god, that's what I was thinking too. I was like, that's the kicker, it's just capitalism. It's just capitalism. Friends, we are here today. As you know, as you know, now I'm all thrown. Okay, hi friends, it's still comfy Tuesday. I'm Julia Washington, your host of Pop Culture Makes Me Jealous. We are on my channel today. I am joined by I'm Natalie Katona, host of To All the Men I've Tolerated Before, and Queen and David Bowie Enthusiast. <laughs> oh, is that not my normal intro? Oh, I, <laughs> I love don't it. normally I love just it. go, I love Queen and I love David Bowie. I mean, I love Queen. All of the um, men that and... I've ever loved are dead, it turns mm. out. You know Damn. what? You know what? Kind of <laughs> kind of the same. Yeah. If you really think um, about it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. We're not going to think too deep about it. We are here today. We are gathered today to discuss the Heath Ledger 2001 classic, A Knight's Tale. And if you are on our, if you are here watching us live, we don't know because we are using a third party app. So drop a comment in the chat, in the chit chat. Kiki, let's kiki in the comments, as the kids say. Um, but let's kick it off with a summary of what A Knight's Tale is about for those who haven't seen it. And I'm confused as to why you wouldn't have watched this movie because it is literally the best movie. Number two, in my opinion, on the scale of movies to watch that Heath Ledger stars in. Here's the description. Peasant-born William Thatcher begins a quest to change his stars, win the heart of an exceedingly fair maiden, and rock his medieval world. With the help of friends, he faces the ultimate test of medieval gallantry, tournament jousting, and tries to discover if he has the medal to become a legend. 
This movie was released May 11th, 2000, uh, 2001. So I was definitely a junior in high school. And it's I was based school. on A Knight's Tale by Jeffrey Chaucer. Technically. <laughs> That's what it says in the Google. I you know what? I didn't it's know. loosely based on Jeffrey Chaucer's A Knight's I Tale. I tried to make a high school teacher allow me to use A Knight's Tale as my movie to like historical accuracy project or whatever and then he threw a baby fit because he hated the movie and i was like why are you throwing a baby fit you came up with this assignment then you asked us to think critically about whether or not history is actually represented correctly in film and now you just want to scream at me that because a knight's tale uses queen it doesn't get to be history <laughs> and other like 20th century music which i thought was brilliant my other favorite show, the WB's Rain, does mm -hmm. the same thing and it does it better than Bridgerton because I like the Bridgerton soundtracks because it's like a puzzle and you're yeah, like, yeah, they Which do one's it, this? <laughs> but they do it in the style of the Regency era yeah. versus using the actual like music. Yeah. 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 So, Natalie. There's so much to say about this movie, but I want to start with saying I really appreciate that you sat through a two hour plus movie. Oh, that's right. I did again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. again. And and I just I think they did a better job than Armageddon in dropping us into what is going on. Like from the jump, they're immediately yeah. like, here's the story. Dude's dead. Heath is great. And they go and they're on horses and they're on horses. I did get to take a break during this one to sit on the porch and talk to my mom. So I forgot that it was over two hours long until I looked it up and I was like, 211. Mm -hmm. That's not my sweet spot. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No. I, where do you want to start? Um, well, I did a lot of nerd research. So why don't we start <laughs> with you? <laughs> okay. I, until you re said the line, change your stars. Like the first time, number one, I wanted to hate Heath Ledger's character because he was really? starting to get, he was starting to give me Lucas Scott energy. <gasps> really? He was starting to give me Lucas Scott on a horse energy. Like at the point when he's like, you need to run. And he's like, fuck running. I'm a badass. That point. Okay. Um, The way that he just badgered Jocelyn <laughs> until she decided to like him. He kind of badgers. <laughs> Oh yeah, and then yeah. I and then I also kind of like I actually didn't like their relationship. No, <laughs> it bothered me because it was very much like, and I get it. It's the thirteenth, it's the fourteenth century, so shit's different back then. They're not living to fifty. I understand, but when she's like, "You need to lose to prove your love to me," I was like, "This is literally his job." And yeah. people are dependent on him for money. Yeah. Like, you don't get to make that request. Yeah, and then no, he that hit, does it. Right. It hit different. I was like, ooh. I was like, I used to think that this was actually a play to put in my playbook. But then mm -hmm. I was like, oh, no, now there's money involved. We're in late stage capitalism. They're yeah. in late stage feudalism. Mm -hmm. So, um, no, he was giving me real big Lucas Scott vibes. And it's because... You know, Lucas, I mean, honestly, he he decides that he's well above his station. He decides that he's just going to scream at everybody that he deserves better that, than he gets. And then he's going to harass a woman in a church on a horse. <laughs> oh, see, I, you know, the reduction in that way. I'm just like, dang it. I was I because I still saw it as an underdog movie of well, like breaking out of your station because that was so hard in the 14th century. So then. We got to, you know, his dad. Oh, wrecked and me. I, I was weeping. Yeah. And then I just start weeping. And I'm like, no, because this is what Jules and I are trying to do every day. We're <laughs> trying to change our stars. We don't want to live in patriarchy and capitalism anymore. We're trying to change everyone's stars. <laughs> and then I was back on board. <laughs> I, was like, I was back on I, board. Now I understand why he's yelling all the time. Mm -hmm. Um because I did not like the way that he just started screaming at her that she's a silly little girl with a silly little flower. And she's like, you're just a silly little boy. 
with a horse and a stick and i was like hell yeah i was like I mean, sports are dumb they're <laughs> both silly honestly they're both silly the only difference to me was, you know, she comes from a pre- place of privilege. So, like, she knows where she's going to eat tomorrow. He does not. Or until he, until they start winning and, like, making right. money. Yeah. And I can't even dock her that much because at that point in the movie, she does not know that he also lives a life of privilege. Right. Right. So, like, at that point, she's just like, if I'm silly, you're fucking silly. And you just have a giant stick that you wave around. And then, and then, you know, I was on her side because I was like, I hate sports. And I was like, Justine is dumb. I was like, why are we doing this? Well, because we don't anymore. So there's that. We, don't, and we do at the Renaissance. Festival. Well, that's, 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 that's like, that's cosplay. It's not the same. I was like, Justine is dumb because then I couldn't not because we're re-watching the two i'm re-watching are, the tutors yeah. you're watching is it this is your first time this is my first it? time yeah okay. because i was peak child rearing when it released <clears throat> so all i could think about was how this is what men did when there wasn't a war because they were so bored and angry and then prince <laughs> and then the bad guy is actually supposed to be in a war and he's like checking his fantasy football team like he's having people run into the middle of the battlefield to be like malige we got the <laughs> rankings from paris rufus sewell is that how you say his name he's i was thinking count he's count admir or whatever yeah. i was thinking i was like this guy i've never seen this actor play a character that i didn't despise i know but he's so hot <laughs> oh that's a lie i take it back he was in victoria the pbs series and he plays lord m and he really was endearing in that he's so hot but he's been around for so long so that long. it took that long it took to 2018 <laughs> before i saw him in a role that i was like i'm not creeped out by you sir and so he's just like flipping these papers men are dying in the background and i was like oh my god jousting is as dumb as football <laughs> like, because. Here you guys are playing war. King Henry VIII never once cared that if he died, the line of succession was fucked and they were going to have to do a lot of paperwork because he never had a male heir. And he was like, knock me off this horse, bitches. Knock me off the horse. (laughs) And it gave him a head injury that made him mentally ill. And then he started killing wives. And I think it also like gave him a leg injury too that never that quite gave, that over... gave him the gout that made him further enraged yeah. at all of his youthful wives. Yeah, except for Jane Seymour because that's the one that he loved the most. Apparently, he loved her the most. She was yeah. the, she was an angel from heaven. Yeah. So the jousting thing when he's screaming at her, I was like, "Good for you for telling him he's just a dumb boy with a dumb stick." I go because jousting is stupid. Now that I think about. It. I was like, this is dumb. They're just recreating war because they're not currently in war, but it's also not keeping them from fighting one another because it's like all of these countries and all of these places in Europe come together for these tournaments. And then they're like, if you look at my sister one more way and don't choose to marry my six year old niece and enter that contract <laughs> that when she is 12 years old, I can marry you can marry her then I'm going to take over all of your lands and kill every duke that's in your nation and it's like last week we were at the Super Bowl slinging beers and Mm -hmm, mm high-fiving it's so dumb Mm -hmm. yeah I don't want to be impaled by anything also that it's so dumb and they're hitting one another with swords (laughs) yeah I just but we also know I don't like loud or violent right <laughs> i like hockey with the which is just violence on ice but if you put all of our world leaders mm-hmm. in a place because <laughs> only rich people could joust right i just had an image of mitch mcconnell <laughs> on ice skates glitching <laughs> And then, like, everyone in the fucking Congress who's, like, elderly on ice skates <laughs> trying to play hockey. But do you see what I'm saying? Like, only rich people got to joust, which I did not know of was noble, a thing. Of noble blood, because that's yeah. the whole premise of the movie is that they, you know, fabricate his lineage. So he, he can't, and it has to be on both sides. Like, you yeah. can't have married in. 
Yeah. So I was like, so all of and the four ones- generations back, which is like the only. So- it's bonkers to me that they kept such great records on nobility like that. It's bonkers to me that they would only let the other rich people hit one another with swords because that's not what rich people do now. Rich people choose to like torture us in new and innovative ways. Yeah, like, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Where's the lie? Um Yeah, so I Are you ready for some of my nerd shit? Yes. Number one, I do love this movie. I think that this movie is charming and beautiful, and it has a killer soundtrack, which is always what gets me going. Yeah. And Heath Ledger is a beautiful baby. He's just beautiful baby. Oh, he's so cute. I, okay, side side note. I actually was watching, there was a scene that he looks at the camera, and I was like, holy shit, you look like you could be related to Joseph Gordon-Levitt right there, which kind of threw me. Because, you know, they're in 10 things together. Yeah. I think I burst into tears the first time that he actually looked into the camera and they, like, panned in on him doing the Mm -hmm. Heath Ledger smirk. Because I still do get very emotional that Heath Ledger died so young. Mm -hmm. And whenever I get, like, an update about his and Michelle Williams' daughter or Michelle Williams, like, finding love after Heath or whatever, like, it literally lays me out for the rest of the day. and I. Truly, when my friends told me that Heath Ledger had died, I was in my college cafeteria. I laid my head down Mm -hmm. and I just started wailing like like someone had told me that my dog had just gotten hit by a car and then someone had to just walk me home. I was very dramatic about it, but he was so talented and he was so beautiful and he was so charming Mm -hmm. and funny. And then he was just gone. So and it's going to happen next week, too, if we commit to Mrs. Doubtfire because or no next week is twilight and then the next time we're on your channel it's mrs doubtfire Mm. because i haven't watched a robin williams movie since he died oh okay because robin williams movies are in my rotation regularly no i can't do it oh because they made me watch coco the gorilla grieve robin williams and now they're both dead yeah and i have to live with that every day that's sad i know yeah all of the men I've loved before have died. <laughs> That's your spinoff say. show. That's your That's spinoff show. Um, so they kept calling Prince Edward the Black Prince. Uh-huh. And I was like, which Prince Edward is this? Because they're so freaking many yeah because they are not original in naming their children they're all henry's and george's and edwards and williams it's very confusing a couple of james's in there nobody a cares John or two yeah <clears throat> so i looked him up and there's like no conclusive agreement on why they called him the black prince because he only started being known as the black prince in the tudor era Mm -hmm. which i thought was interesting i wonder if he survived the sweating sickness and it has something to do with like the plague so the theories go from anywhere um range from the color of his armor because it eventually like turned whatever that metal they used it turned it to black um all the way to like the way that his attitude was and the way that his like personhood was he was cruel to those he defeated in jousting he was a very like jousting was his thing like he was known for his jousting hence why he was represented in the movie apparently like according to the website i found the uk history website i found they were like he was so into jousting it was documented in a knight's tale and i was like hey that's what i watched (laughs) um his coat of arms consisted of three ostrich feathers and a black background. Um, so all of these things are kind of like part of like the these could be the reasons, but like there's no documentation. So it just kind of pick pick your own theory, you know? Yeah. Which I get. I assumed because up call- until the Tudors, he was known as Edward of Woodstock. Oh, see, I assume that they switched over to the Black Prince because he was always incognito when he was jousting. So he was like the shadow prince. But he wasn't. Okay. He only was in this movie. Like that it was known. Too. 
yeah right like because he, i was like what, why does this guy have to be undercover like king henry the eighth is like behead me i dare you <laughs> right right that was only part of a that was part of the plot point for the movie he yeah. literally was like like every website i hit was like he loved jousting he was known for it he loved jousting he was known for it and it like okay so why did they act like he was hiding himself because during someone it? Because someone had to save Heath Ledger at the end of the movie. Oh, that's fair. Someone had to change the stars. Mm -hmm. Which, going back to my original point that you and I are always trying to change the stars anyways. Now that I'm thinking about it, and now that I've said that, it's still a man of privilege who had to change William's stars. Right. And that's usually what it is. Somebody in a police of privilege... Like people were like, oh, I worked really hard and I had no help and I had no luck. It's like, no, at some point, someone in a better position than you offered you support in some way, shape or form and lifted you up. You may not recognize it as that because you probably did work really hard to get where you are. It, it's just. That's what it is. Everything's about networking, even in feudal England. Yes. 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 Um, I do love Paul Bettany as Jeffrey Chaucer. I forgot how good he was in this film. People can come for me. Light my ass on fire. This is Paul Bettany's best role. Who cares about vision? (laughs) Who cares? Not you. Not me. Mm -hmm. And I love vision. And I cried when vision poof poofed in all of it. That was actually very hard. And I sobbed throughout all of Wanda vision. Okay. Everyone calm down. Yeah, we all did. But Paul Bettany walking his naked ass down a dirt road to be like, I'm Jeffrey Chaucer, bitches. And I'm like, hell yes. It's like when the guy who played Roger in the movie for Rent was Mm -hmm. William Shakespeare. And I was like, this should be the man who only plays William Shakespeare. Paul Bettany is the only man who should ever get to play Joffrey Chaucer. Yeah. And so I kind of loved that when they found out he had a gambling problem and that's why he was naked. Not because he, not because of what I was like, it's so funny. And then when that guy was like, you know, you know, the he said something. This is what I wrote down when he was like standing naked a second time. Yeah, it was like, um, gambling is a sin. They'll take your money, and if you have none, we'll take your skin to prove a point that gambling is a sin. So it's like you shouldn't be gambling, but we'll take your fucking money. But we'll, but we'll make sure but then that once you, you don't have any more money. Yeah, we're gonna mo- also murder you to prove fact- a point that gambling is a sin. But we're gonna take your money. It's like this cycle of like you shouldn't be doing this, but we're gonna make you do it. And probably because I was in middle school and I was so steeped in like Midwest culture, mm-hmm. I I clocked every time God became a really important part in this movie. I was like, there they are mm-hmm. talking about God again. <laughs> I was like, I don't remember them having such a fierce religious identity in this movie. I was like, but I guess that was everyone's identity in feudal England. Yeah. Isn't that the whole point of like, isn't that part of King Henry VIII's reign was like breaking away. So that way, because, you know, he wanted to divorce and whatever, marry whatever hot thing, but Catholicism wouldn't allow. Yeah. So he was like, what? but they were so ensconced in the Catholic church prior to that. Yeah, they were, I don't want to use the word fanatics, but like it, it was like everything he said, he was like, you remind me of the Bible, but yeah. in the way that you're the moon. And I was yeah. like, and she's just looking at him. And I was like, that is a really dumb thing to say. Like find someone else in this room to dance with. <laughs> like, I was like, what a dumb thing to say. Yeah. But <laughs> Paul Bettany as Joffrey Chaucer because the speeches and the intros that he gives mm-hmm. in so every good. they're the best part of the movie. It's it, that's exactly how you want to be introduced for something that is such a wild sport. I would think you yeah. know what I mean. And then and then bad guys Rufus, mm-hmm. <laughs> his little squire man is trying. He's trying, and Lots then he ends his speech with, and he has a big dick. And Chaucer is like, good job. <laughs> you did that. <laughs> you did that. He yeah. has a big dick. <laughs> yeah. I promise I've seen it. And Chaucer, <laughs> and Chaucer's like, good for you. You did that. Yeah. Because I think when we teach Chaucer 
and the Canterbury Tales in like high schools and colleges or whatever. I had to learn it in both. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like like they elevate Chaucer to that like Shakespeare level where it's like these are the greatest minds of our time. And to like watch Paul Bettany be like, I'm naked, I have a gambling <laughs> problem, I'm sarcastic and I'm mean about it. Yeah. <laughs> and just be like, no, this is the Chaucer I actually want to hang out with. Right, <laughs> right. Because you know, they say that he was that Shakespeare was inspired by Chaucer. Like that's, you know, part of it or whatever. Yeah. Um, but I feel like why are you trying to make your um poets and writers sound more sophisticated than what they are because i think that's that plays into our classism still mm -hmm. where it's like well shakespeare had to be classy or else we're not teaching like the white children about him yeah and there's a point too where it's like chaucer is educated he's right and he was so it was he was huge in bringing middle english to england right to london mm -hmm. right so like that was a huge part of it too whereas before it was like who's reading no one who's was allowed reading? to you know like no one's reading you're not allowed to read you and the language was so broken ish kind of right yeah. like if i remember correctly and so you can't just like i just feel like button to that up Sorry, in our ahead. like american education system we have such a like oh no the people who got to be the greats mm -hmm. were greats because like they were poised and they were classy and they got favors in with the queen or whatever and it's like were they though like i'm so sick of hearing that mark twain and that other moron were good people mark twain wasn't a good person who's we right? know everyone who has written about him like it's very clear he was probably a dr like he was a sarcastic asshole right like literally like walden sitting in that pond just yeah. avoiding his wife while his mommy brings him cheese sandwiches i'm like why are we and they're like he did such a great job writing about the ducks. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> but we lie. We lie to children in America is what I'm saying. We so lie. What's, the, what's interesting this week about watching this film versus last week, last week it was like, oh, I didn't learn real science. This week was like, oh, I, because I, you know, I clicked on, I pulled up Prince Henry, the Black Prince. So then I like to go down, like, okay, succeeded, um, you know, all the things like success. He never, he never ascended the throne. He died a year before his father did, and his son Richard became King Richard the Second. But I love, but like all these things that I'm reading, it's like I learned all of this: mm -hmm. the wars, the battles you know chaucer like all of it was just coming flooding back to me not necessarily the finer details but just like sitting in the classroom and learning all this stuff then it gave me pause back to your point natalie of like why was it so important for an american little girl to learn so much about 14th 15th and 16th century england because Jules, you were in Christian school <laughs> and the and feudalism England, ancient England or whatever you want to call it, they're like literally the center point of Christianity. Yeah, because it all leads up to the Reformation and yes. how important the Refor Reformation is, which then also leads to the, you know, fling for religious freedom, which is like the whole root of, you know, the 13 colonies. Mm hmm. No, I'm telling you, they were just indoctrinating you. Yeah. That's fine. I only learned about all of the successions and all of the families and all of it through historical fiction because it was mm. all saucy and like a and sexy. Mm -hmm. And then I would he take that, my bodice. Right. <laughs> I would take that knowledge from the other Bolin girl. And then like I had like a three week unit my freshman year of high school where like I was just like quipping out. I was like, no, this is what happened. This is how we felt about it. But uh, my teacher's like, why? Why do you know everything about Greek mythology, Norse mythology, and also the Tudors? I was like, because to me, Tudors are also mythology, even though they're real people. <laughs> right, right. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, it's true. It's true. Um, can we talk about the female blacksmith for a minute? I love her. Yes. I also loved her, and I also loved that her logo was the Nike logo, but upside down. So silly. <laughs> so silly. And do you remember every millennial movie doing that, where all of a sudden they'd, like, sneak in a logo, like, wink, wink, like, yeah. uh -uh. 
we're yeah. listening to David Bowie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I love how like she they didn't like they opened it up with like a oh, girl armorist. That's weird because it's the era. Yeah. But, but even then, sorry, go ahead. But they think it's weird because they're outsiders to whatever town they're in. And right. when she asks them, well, did they talk shit about me because I'm a girl? They went, no, they just said that, like, you're really good at armor, but you suck at, like, horsing, sho like, shoeing horses or whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's that's that was where I was going to go. But, like, at the end of it, it wasn't about her being a girl. It was just about her, like... It was just about like her like her differing skill set, and then she turns out she makes the best armor out of any armor that anyone could ever wear. Right, because she and, understood how the body moved. Right, and I just thought that was a really awesome. I just thought that was really awesome because it's 2001. They really could have gone in a different oh. direction in a different way that was not great. And I also enjoy this movie because none of the jokes are at the women's expense. Right. And like, yes, there's conflict between like William and Jocelyn and they quip, mm -hmm. but at no point is he going back to his other dumbass friends and like Chaucer's making a joke at her expense. Right. And they're not like looping Kate in to some like weird nightly locker room talk or anything like it's literally like we are five people we are traveling to paris together none i also enjoyed that like even though they were all building connections with i think her name is kate the lady blacksmith oh what was her um, name let me confirm <clears throat> yeah you're right kate so even though they're all um with Kate and they're building relationships with Kate and they're getting close to Kate, none of them are like hitting on her. Right. Or like also none of the outside men are hitting on her. Like they're she's at a bar with them and mm -hmm. no one's getting weird. Like no one's getting frisky. No like Watt doesn't have to kick someone's ass because he said something. Like she just gets to be. Right. And we don't see a lot of male driven stories where women just kind of get to be right right versus outlander oh yeah where they're in a pub and you know they're speaking gaelic about her katrina whatever her character's name is um her real name claire. is katrina claire thank you and so then they have to fight to defend her honor and that is 400 years after this story yeah and, hey, I'm not saying that, like, hey, it was really great out there in feudalism England for us ladies. We had a we had a really great time. Um, I'm just saying that, like, that's an active choice that those filmmakers made. Mm -hmm. And they didn't have to do that. And that, I think that's it, because what we're seeing, what we're relearning now is just how horrific the early 2000s were for women in general, representation in the media, but also just... Uh, in television and movies, not just the way that we're reported on, but like, and I think that's what I, I think that's why I appreciate it so much because it is showing like you can just exist. And isn't that what I'm always saying? Like, just mm -hmm. give a shit where we exist. Give a shit where marginalized people just get to exist. Stop reminding us that we are, you know, essayed. Stop reminding us that we were slaves all the time stop reminding us that as women we can't walk down the street safe all of those things are still true and they will still remain true once i turn the tv off give right. me something where i can just enjoy watching these characters build relationship and exist in a way that may not necessarily be true but we could strive for and and it, Jocelyn and Jocelyn's handmaiden also have a lot of agency. Like, there's not this, like, looming father figure who's like, no, you must marry Rufus. I've already signed a paper or whatever. Like, she's but basically does, unsupervised. Right. But Rufus does make a comment that he's entered into negotiations about marrying her with his father. And that's the only, that's, like, literally it. We don't get anything else about it. And it literally consumes him that she might not be into it. It's very yeah. Billy on the Titanic shooting at Leonardo DiCaprio, even though the Atlantic's going to get him anyways. I was like, sir, you were in the middle of a war. 
Like, yeah. put away your jousting paper. <laughs> yeah. You know what was really bothersome now that you bring him up again about him to me was how he kept saying, in what world do you think that we could compete? Sir, you keep cheating. You keep cheating. So it's not competing. You are cheating. Every single time you are cheating. So that's not a fair fight. So I'm sorry. There is a world where the two of you can compete. It's you not cheating. There's a lot of commentary that could be made about how this movie really does represent a lot of different facets of the male ego Mm -hmm. and you know william also has male ego flaws like he's really brash Mm -hmm. he very much thinks that he's deserving of whatever it is he wants and he believes that he is deserving of whatever he wants despite what might be going around Mm -hmm. going on around him Mm -hmm. um because him not fleeing meant that his friends didn't flee either. And, right. and then there's Rufus, who also refuses to lose. So William's over here with an ego being like, no, I deserve to compete and I deserve to have a worthy c- opponent. And because he's the best, I better get to fight the best. Mm-hmm. And then Rufus is over here being like, I'm not the best. I just make sure that I win every time. Right. Which is, you know, modern version of that would be your dad gave you a job Mm -hmm. and you didn't have to start at the bottom. Yeah. He's like, I want coin horses and women. And William's like, do you always put them in that order? And he's like, probably. Okay, cool. Yeah. But I do appreciate William calling kind of like, like the subtle shade that happens in that, in that moment, because it's like, it really does give you like, if you didn't understand Rufus's character at that moment, you understand Rufus's character now. Well, and it becomes very clear that this actually had nothing to do with Jocelyn. Right. The dynamic between William and Rufus, it's literally he thought that his ego might be bruised. Right. And it wasn't even bruised yet. He literally just assumed that he would be embarrassed and he was going to pull out a lot of stops to make sure that he's not embarrassed. And the modern viewpoint of that is murdering women before they, you know tell your buddies that you are mean to them Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah um just a quick side tangent the beautiful actress that plays jocelyn is so stunning and gorgeous and just lovely and also not a great british accent no bless her heart and she doesn't have a very great British accent and then I went do I believe that she's a good actress because she's in one of my favorite movies and that's why I think she could have been in other things because I'm I know I've seen her in other the holiday I've seen her in the holiday Mm -hmm. Rufus is also in the holiday right he's yeah he's the jerk which is why I'm like sir can you play something where you're not a jerk and he does later in life but you were such a big jerk that someone was like you know who's a great romantic partner jack black <laughs> in yeah. A yeah truly that Which, yes yes truly no, we'll shade to jack, with, no, sorry, no shade to jack black jack black better know that i love him and that i am constantly watching a jack black movie and if you want to doubt that go watch our fucking episode about school of rock yeah yeah and in she's- the end of time <laughs> But to your point, though, like, I mean, she's she's actively working still like she's got credits like every year up until this year. But also, like, when you think about her in the holiday, it's not a very big role. When I think about her in this TV show that she did called Mistresses, again, not a very big role. I watched Mistresses, didn't realize she was in it. Mm -hmm. She's in season one, I think. Let me confirm that. Because when she showed up in Mistresses, I was like, hey, I know her. But I think that's the kind of actress that she is, where people are like, oh, I know her. How do I know her? Yeah. 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 She's in eight episodes in... Where'd it go? Where'd you go? Oh, 2013. Mm. Oh, I think that's the first season. Sorry, go ahead. But I, I think she's very beautiful. I really like her character, Jocelyn. Mm -hmm. like i do i like her character jocelyn i like that she didn't fall into this thing where she was just like easily impressed by him because he was winning and she actually tells him she's like that doesn't fucking matter right why does that matter 
And I was like, you're right, Jocelyn. Why does this matter? The yeah. Crusades or something are going on. Right. And I, like I said earlier, she did lose me when she said you have to lose in order for me to believe that you love me because I actually hate that kind of shit generally. Yeah. Like there shouldn't be that type of gesture to prove love is real. Yeah. It's like, I don't know. Go ahead. And I get it. Um, He did a little switcheroo and made Chaucer write a note to you. And they just took a bunch of beautiful sentiments that real grownups who had been in love had experienced mm -hmm. and put them in a note, which I think that part also made me cry because I was like, look at all these people feeling. Well, and I loved how it was like, kind of a reminder that love is collaborative in a way because when you're just doing it on your own without sort of like taking in what other people how other people feel and react and respond and behave um in relationships in general you you don't really get a well-rounded version of what love could be it's like it's like where am i going with this right it's like if you only see very toxic, abusive love, that's what you believe it is. If you right. only see like romantic, my parents are so in love, they still kiss at 70. That's what you believe it is. But you kind of need to have input from all versions of love to kind of decide what love makes you feel comfortable and yeah. what love you want for yourself. Yeah. And it's a beautiful scene and he does come up with that silly little moon line mm -hmm. but then like he can't speak to her i was like why is she impressed with you at all <laughs> like, i mean i'm a lot better uh via text and dms than i am in person so i kind of get it <laughs> yeah that is the modern version of it but when he's like <laughs> your beauty will be represented in the flanks of my horse she's like "Ooh, tell me more yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> tell me more about how my face will be the flank of your horse <laughs> of your horse and i was like yeah. yeah tell him he's stupid this is very much how like i think that the travis kelsey and the taylor swift romance will actually mm. go down where he will tell try to tell her how he threw a ball and she'll be like yeah you threw a ball <laughs> and <laughs> And, but then also she'll tell him how he she went to the woods and wrote a new song and he'll be like yeah the woods <laughs> and then that's their relationship because i'm like what are those two talking about like, i don't think they're talking i don't think they're talking which is fantastic for her i don't think it's a talking relationship i don't think so either i think yeah. it's just like a lot of pinning up against various walls yeah we all <laughs> at least once or twice in our, life, in our lives need that sort of carnal animalistic connection. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. positive and healthy, not toxic. Yeah. 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 There's a rugby player out there somewhere I still make up things about in my head. <laughs> you saw my... I don't want to say it on live. Never mind. Go to my TikTok. <laughs> You'll find it. It's obvious. <laughs> but I also think about these very accomplished actors. Keith Ledger, mm -hmm. um, Mark Addy, mm -hmm. who, I don't know if you know this, he got to be on Game of Thrones. He got to I, be like a bad king on Game of Thrones. Yeah, I think I did know that because I was looking at his IMDb last night. So it's like, uh -huh. I know I know him from other things that aren't just this movie. And I saw that yeah. he did Game of Thrones. Yeah. And then I'm upset that I can't remember the actor's name for Watt because I almost got to meet him. Uh, um, His name is alan tudyk is that how you say tudyk. it yeah yeah he gets to be in firefly like these are actors that you see and you recognize and you love their projects but i will hands down be like because all five of them were together this is their best actual shit. right <laughs> well they were a really great combination too like i think this is a really good example of a cast that has excellent chemistry together as well mm -hmm. like i you can't convince me that these people are not all friends in real life. Like the way that they interact with each other, the way that they love each other and stand by each other. Like when Williams found out and they put him in the stocks. Right. Mm -hmm. And like, they just stand there to protect him from like people messing with him. Like I like, yeah. Yeah. They're all friends in real life. 
They yeah. all do Christmas together. Like you can't tell me that they're not convening for Thanksgiving. Yeah. Is there Thanksgiving in England? I think only in Canada and here, right? Mm -hmm. I, okay. Do you, I think it's weird. And I think it's because like I had a mandala effect in my mm. mind. And I thought that Jocelyn does get pissed off that he lied. But she's never pissed off. No, about it. she 100% stands by him. And I, I kind of actually love that as well because I think there's too much leaning into the, I can't believe you lied to me. And it's black and white versus mm -hmm. Jocelyn understanding the total nuance of why he had to lie to do what he loved to do and was like, I love you, William. I love you, William. Not yeah. because you're Sir Ulrich, but because of who you are. And again, a great message versus like, let's just drum up drama and teach women that they need to go batshit because somebody decided they wanted to change their station in life and had to lie about a few details. Yeah. And then she goes to like Cheap Street or Easy Street Cheap or side. whatever. Cheap Side. <laughs> and she goes and gets his blonde. Street. Easy Street. Can we talk about Rufus following heath ledger into the slums to be like haha i found out that you have a friend that lives in the slums clearly you're a liar and i just this that's also a testament to just how like dedicated he is to winning and like at all costs because like you're gonna wear like you're clearly a wealthy man and you're gonna walk into cheap side like that's not a thing that's not a thing also like it's insane it's mm -hmm. insane just get on your horse yeah. Just get on your horse mm -hmm. and be like, I can knock you down. He knocked him down once. Why couldn't he do it again? <laughs> like, um, but the that scene where his dad is blind and they haven't seen each other for decades because that's how apprenticeship worked in feudal England. If it wasn't an apprenticeship within your own town, you just sent your kids places. Yeah. yeah. And like, it's not like we under, I don't understand how to read a map. So when Will said, I'm afraid I won't be able to find my way home. I'm like, that's real. I also never feel like I can make my way home. I have a GPS. I have a GPS. It talks to me. It talks to me. And I'm still like, this could go either way. The number one thing it tells me is rerouting. But, and I think that they did a really nice job, like making that whole him giving and i also think that the guy that he hands will too like that's a name that i should like a sir edgar like that's a name that we oh, should recognize. i meant to write it down and i forgot i was so focused on you know plaque plaque black prince edward i was mm -hmm. like so focused on that so i think that they did a really great job of like softening that so it wasn't like my father abandoned me with this dude it mm -hmm. was like you could tell that his dad was making a really hard choice and it was a hard choice out of necessity. Right. Right. And that happened a lot. I would say I would girl, I think even up into the 20th century, because it's like, Oh, I have mouths. I can't afford to feed. Who can we marry off and who can we ship away? Yeah. Their story made me weep. When no. he's when they're like, when's the last time everyone's been back in London? And you know, William's like 12 years, and we get the flashback of like what's happening. I was like weeping. And yeah. then when they hug again, weeping. Well, and, the, and then when she brings him and is mm -hmm. describing to him what happens, and I'm like, mm -hmm. okay. I was like, I guess she isn't pissed that he lied because instead she's like, I'm going to go to Cheapside and get his dad. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm still not entirely clear. Like what kind of like, was she royalty? They refer to her as princess one at one point. And I was like, sometimes princess? I'm like, do they actually know? Like, yeah, who is like, she? Who is she? I know we know she's a wealthy daughter. I feel like she'd have a better seat if she was a princess. I also feel like she wouldn't be traveling to all of the jousts if she was a princess. <laughs> Unless her relative is also competing. I don't know. It just, I didn't understand that part. But then I was like, why are you thinking so hard? Just let it be. Just let it be. But yeah, they do refer to her as princess. I was like, I don't even think they know. <laughs> yeah, because, okay, so there is one scene, one bit of dialogue that I was just like, oh, that I don't know how I feel about that. When she goes to his tent after he's been, like, 
pummeled beaten. multiple yeah. times because he didn't fight back. And then Paul Bettany sees them and he's like, bed her, bed him well, princess, bed him well. And I was like, oh, Paul, we didn't need that commentary, sir. <laughs> But that's the only thing that yeah. I can think of where it was just like a moment, like a cringe. Yeah. I I also remember the dancing to Golden Years being better. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, was like, I was like, I was like, is this what it's going to be? <laughs> I remember it being so much better. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but also... I was going to say, but also it's 2001. But you know what? That's not true because in uh, 10 Things I Hate About You and She's All That and other movies in the 90s where they had a breakout and dance moment, the dances were a lot better. Yes. People still learn the She's All That dance routine. Yeah. 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 To Fat Boy Slim. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I was like, was Heath Ledger just not a good dancer? Like, what happened? <laughs> I was like. Yeah. You know what? He's not dancing and 10 things i hate about you actually mm -mm. no no but, yeah yeah that but i did love how when she sent her lady i like i loved the progression of like first i'm gonna send my lady and she's gonna ask you or my maid and she's gonna ask you what are you wearing and they're like um describing the color of the tent, the tent. so cute and then and then it's you know the, the maid the maid the maid and then it becomes jocelyn it was like okay now like that version of courting i guess if you will yeah. it just feels so innocent and pure and so sweet and romantic and at some points too like i don't know yeah no i do it's gonna be green with <laughs> gold trim and wooden knobs wooden <laughs> toggles oh toggles that's it <laughs> wooden. mark addy is a comedic genius and the fact that like his biggest role to date is well the full monty but oh i haven't seen that movie in forever but the the thing that's gonna stick in people's mind is him being robert barthony on uh, on game of thrones just mm -hmm. enrages me because i'm like but he's so funny Mm. it would be like having the guy from king of queens being in like game of thrones as a bad guy and you're like what <laughs> except mark addy's funnier not king of queens <laughs> king of queens is making a comeback i know why i wonder i think it's because leah remini is being even more vocal now about scientology mm. so i think she's ended up in the press more and so younger generations are like Arcanium. who's this lady and then they find king of queens yeah natalie yeah. we've been so engrossed in conversation it's already 10 minutes to the end of show I, I have one i have one more bullet point we haven't hit on okay the final scene when he's finally competing against rufus the cheater uh-huh and they're like trying to put the armor back on him and he's and like no, no no i can't breathe I in can't. it and he's been injured severely. Like, how yeah. did he not die? Because that cheater, cheater, pumpkin eater. Um, and then he doesn't. But I was like, okay, am I cynical? Or is the message like true toughness is not wearing armor to face your your uh, enemy? No, it's just stupidity. Mm -hmm. Like when he goes, what? Strap it to my arm. Even what is like, this is mm -hmm. what we're doing. Yeah forfeit he stabbed you i go also why isn't anyone just going isn't it weird that he's been impaled <laughs> and stabbed because that's not allowed <laughs> like, yeah it's i was like i don't like that but also like uh, would well, it have happened because in tutors when they're jousting all the time they do dumb stuff they do dumb stuff and that's how king henry the eighth got that head injury yeah <laughs> like that really knocked him off his rocker mm -hmm, it made mm -hmm. him very paranoid and i think he had migraines for the rest of his life which made him big baby yeah like, well, yeah um he was already big baby but like being in constant pain and the gout sent him over the top but yeah the fact that he like strips down off of his armor and kate's like no and he's like strap it to my arm <laughs> and i was like sir you should just be dead and yeah. this should be a lesson in Sometimes you just don't get what you want. And it's, you still changed your stars. 
Rufus mm-hmm. actually has nothing to do with this. And why? This very extreme, and I'm like, he shouldn't have won. How did he get enough power behind that lance when it's strapped to him? Mm-hmm. Yes. So you're not moving it. The only thing I could think of was Hollywood adrenaline. <laughs> Hollywood <laughs> adrenaline. Mm-hmm. No, I thought that was stupid. <laughs> I was like, this is stupid. Well, and as we know, the whole show's about jousting. And then in the middle of it, I went, jousting? Stupid. <laughs> Sports are stupid. <laughs> Jules has tricked me into another movie where I am forced to watch sports. You love this movie. I Don't love this blame movie. me. I love this movie. I'm very upset that today was so like mentally draining because of the work that I had to do that I did mm-hmm. not just like lay in bed and listen to the soundtrack. Yeah, it's a great soundtrack. It's a great I film. I would have been more prepared for our intro song had yeah. I had actually listened to We how, Will Rock You. How dare we do a show after we've had a busy, busy weekend of living our hot girl lives. Right. Also, <laughs> next week we're doing fucking Twilight and that doesn't have a good soundtrack. What am I going to do without a good soundtrack? Natalie, I need you to understand how much I care for our friendship. Because in my dating profile, when it asks things that you'll never do again, it says, watch Twilight. So here's the thing. We picked Twilight because it was going through an anniversary. We went through this last week with I know. all of the viewers. And I want to say we didn't pick Twilight. I feel like you picked Twilight. Because I thought it would be funny. And they're supposed to be making that mini series, Right. But today I was Googling, because you can't do scary. But what season is it, Jules? It's spooky season. It's spooky season. So I was like, how do I get Jules to do a Halloween movie without it being a Halloween movie? We already did Hocus Pocus. Casper. Oh, I went Adam's Family, because they're so fucking hot. Yeah, I love Adam's Family, actually. Let's do Adam's Family Values. Look at us. This is our show. We can change it. (laughs) We don't have to watch Twilight. I don't want but to then watch I thought it, it is funny because I don't think Rob Pattinson's hot. I just <laughs> it's just Twilight. so funny. I just feel like Twilight, like I have a really good friend that I love and respect and admire so hard. Like it's intense how much I respect her. Yeah. She loves Twilight. And then like she'll post about stuff, and I'm just like, I'm not judging you. I'm just confused. <laughs> well, and then I was trying to like weigh it out in my head. And I was like, what's more interesting for us to talk about? How toxic the Edward and Bella dynamic is, which we talk about ad nauseum on our shows mm-hmm. all the time. Or how fucking hot Gomez and Morticia are. Yeah. And I watched that entire Wednesday show after everyone was so mad about who they cast as Morticia and Gomez. And I was like, they're in it for three minutes. I didn't like the Wednesday show because I was like, the whole point of the Adams family is it's an ensemble cast and it's funny. Why? <laughs> well, Why not, this? they just wanted to give Wednesday her, her, her time. I don't like it. Okay. Final question. Okay. Are you still comfy with a knight's tale? Oh, yeah. Even though jousting's stupid and um, Will had tantrums, (laughs) because Jocelyn met his tantrum with a, I'm putting my foot down and you will not speak to me this way, and then he stopped. (laughs) Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And she gave him the silent treatment and stopped coming to his joust, and that made him real mad. And that is also my ammo to pretend that you're dead (laughs) until I'm not mad anymore. Um, A plus in my book. I was like, Jocelyn did all of the right things. She yeah, didn't allow herself to be verbally accosted by this man on a yeah. horse in a church. <laughs> yeah, so weird. Why? Why didn't you notice that you were walking into a church? I don't understand. Why is God in every scene of this movie? <laughs> because it was thirteen twenty eighty something. Um, I agree with you. I still, I'm so comfy with this too. And I feel like it still holds up with the exception of those two things that we pointed out. But other than that, or did we only point out one thing? I think, I still think that like weird line from Paul Bettany, I was like, I get it though. It's like him going, aha, we did it. And instead mm-hmm. of just going, look at us, we did that. He mm-hmm. went, he said something that the writer of the movie probably thought was poetic. Yeah. So that was the only thing or it's just like, Oh, okay. You could totally edit it out and the movie's still perfect. But other than that, I totally agree with you. Like I am so like, I forgot 
but I didn't forget uh-huh. how much I enjoyed this film. And they didn't take any low blows. Not that there is one person of color in this movie. Right. There's none. But they didn't take, like, what did we watch last week? Armageddon. Our word. Mm-hmm. A lot of 90s racism. And mm-hmm. I was in A Knight's Tale is free of that. Yeah, it's kind of a nice palate cleanser to the crap we watched last week, actually. Yeah. And honestly, like, it was feudalism England. Like, how often do they have, like, interactions with non-European cultures? Honestly, I think I think the actual, like, if memory serves, the actual, like, slave trading didn't start. Well, into the way that it became, that was more of a 16, 17, 1800 thing. But, like, I'm pretty... Ooh, don't quote me because it's been a long time since I've been an undergrad. But I'm pretty sure they did start bringing people back like in the 15th century. Like I think that's, but it wasn't the way it, it, it really exploded once they realized they could pillage and sell people. But that wasn't until they started sending out explorers in the way that they did with like Columbus and shit. Yeah. So what I'm saying is they didn't even give themselves the opportunity to make low blows. Yeah. They didn't use the R word, even when Chaucer was naked. And, like, (laughs) Chaucer didn't use the R word against Watt. And, like, that is something... I don't know, is that a term that we had in feudalism England? Not that they like the writers of the movie would have cared. But no, and I that's that was another point. I was like, ooh, those words actually didn't exist back then. But you know what? I'm not going to be picky about it because I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit. So, yeah. Comfy. Good on you, Heath Ledger. My loving memory of you lives on. Even though I was so worried 15 minutes into this movie, I was like, he's yeah. going to be a fucking Lucas Scott. <laughs> we don't need any more of that. Um, tell all of our friends listening, watching the playback, doing all the things later where they can find you, support you, and what's coming up on your show. Sure. I'm Natalie Katona. To all the men I've tolerated you before is your weekly look at everyday misogyny, and it comes out every Thursday, unless you're a Patreon member like Jules, and then you got the episode today, which is about ADHD. No. No. That was last week. That was last week. Growing intentional relationships and having, like, entering relationships with actual, like, well-rounded intentions and well-thought-out aims and goals. I got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) All right. Well, it looks like I'll be checking my Patreon app. But hey, we've got merch. I'm on TikTok at NadleyK124. We're on Instagram at Men I've Tolerated Pod. And that's me. Jules, tell them what. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's a bye week here at pop culture it makes me jealous where we analyze pop culture through the lens of race or gender and sometimes both um what that means if you're a sports person you know what that means if you're not that means we don't have an episode this week so go and listen to freaky friday with chris DeRosa. it's hilarious he's hilarious um also we have the Jelly Pops Book Club podcast, where we read book to screen adaptations. Go find that po- the both of those podcasts wherever you find your shows. We also have book club on Sunday. So if you are not a member of our Patreon, you don't get access. But if you join our Patreon, you get access, and it's going to be a swell time. We have free tiers on our Patreons, even. Yes, join our communities because you know the men be fighting. The men who control the social medias be fighting. The webs. Um, and so we're dumping our creative shit on Patreon because Patreon doesn't believe in stealing from us. Huh. Well, everyone out there, I just want you to remember that you don't actually have to look at a man on a horse at all if you don't want to. <laughs> if you have to cheat at the game, you did not win the game. Mm-hmm. Um <laughs> what we're learning today what you're witnessing now is that when natalie and i have hot girl weekends we should just delay the show <laughs> usually listen usually one of us has a brain on the yeah. show but we like, both did hot girl shit this it, weekend like because last week you just admitted to everyone i never learned science <laughs> i'm like okay jules you've had you've had several weeks under the row because for parent trap you're like i've never even made one friend at all during I summer camp go to summer camp <laughs> i didn't go to summer camp i don't even have friends so everyone 
You don't have to stare at a man on a horse if you don't want to. If you have to cheat at the game, you're not actually winning. And I hope that everyone gets to change their stars if their stars need changing. Stay cozy, stay comfy. Bye, friend. Bye. Bye. Bye.